So here's another problem. Let's try and solve this the same way we did the last one. What do we do first? Read the problem. While walking outside, Jasmine starts at 2.00 meters per second. During 1.50 seconds, she accelerates to 6.00 meters per second. How far does she walk during this time, and what is her acceleration? Great, we read the problem. What do we do next? Let's draw a diagram. So, again, we've got Jasmine going for a walk. We're going to have two points in the walk, initial, final. Might as well just draw her walking to the right. Makes it a little bit easier for us. So here's ja Jasmine initially. Here is Jasmine finally. What do we know? She starts walking outside. She starts at 2.00 uh, meters per second. So she's starting at 2.00 meters per second. During 1.5 seconds. Now what's that? Well, what do you think? What kind of a quantity is that? Well, units of seconds, it's got to be a time. So this motion is going to take 1.50 seconds. She accelerates to 6.00 meters per second. Well, what kind of a quantity does that look like? Well, it looks like a velocity. And if she accelerates to that much, that must be her final velocity. So she's going to be coming over here and going 6.00 meters per second. Uh, okay, so and then how far does she walk during this time and what is her acceleration? Okay, there we go. So there's the uh, statement of the problem. What do we do next? Or oh, there's the diagram. Define our coordinate system. Again, where do we want to put our origin? Why not just put the origin at her initial position? I've drawn her walking to the right, so we'll define our coordinate system pointing to the right. So here's our origin, there's our coordinate system. Easy enough. Write down the variables. Let's write our variables. What are they? You say them. X naught, X. V naught, V, A, T. X naught, X, V naught, V, A, T. Write down the variables. What do we know, what don't we know, and what do we want? Well, initial position. Well, we've drawn her again, starting out at the origin. So her initial position, X naught, is zero. X, final position. Do we know that? Nope, we don't know that. V naught, initial velocity. Well, we're told that she starts out at 2.00 meters per second. What kind of a quantity is that? Well, meters per second, it's got to be a velocity. So that has got to be her initial velocity, 2.00 meters per second. Uh, v, final velocity. Well, likewise, we are told that she ends up, she accelerates to this, this quantity, meters per second. It's got to be a velocity again. And she is accelerating to that, so that must be her final velocity, 6 meters per second. 6.00 meters per second. Acceleration, we are not told her acceleration. T, well, we are told that she does this or that it takes 1.50 seconds, so T must be 1.50 seconds. There we go. We now have all of the data that we can get from the statement of the problem. Let's go to the equations. I'll take the problem down and put up the equations. Whoops, sorry about that. Forgot one thing. Before we go on to the equations, what are we looking for? What do we want? Well, what is it asking? How far does she walk during this time? In other words, how far does she go? Well, what's that gonna be? Well, that will be her final position, her value for x. So we're looking for x. And then what is her acceleration? So what is a? So we are looking for x and a. OK, now let's go to the equations. So here are the equations. Let's solve this just like we did last time. Look to the equations. What do we want? x and a. Where do we want to start? Well, we might as well start with x. If we go through them, uh, for example, like last time, if we go through them and we cannot find an equation that we can solve, we might have to solve for something else. So it could be possible that we, we cannot solve for A until we solve for X, or we cannot solve for X until we solve for A, where we would have to use our calculated value to proceed with the rest of the problem. But let's see. Let's see if we have to do that. So let's see if we can solve for X. Can we use the first equation to solve for X? You, you look at it and decide, no, there is no x in that equation. Can we use the second uh, equation to solve for x? Well, let's see. It's got an x in it. 
Do we know X naught? Yes. Do we know V naught? Yes. Do we know V? Yes. Do we know T? Yes. So we could use the second equation. Let's look at the third. Could we use the third equation? Think about it. No, we can't. It's got an X in it, but we need to know A. And we don't know A. So we cannot use, at this point, the third equation to solve for X. Fourth equation, likewise we cannot, although it's got an X in it, we don't know A. So we cannot solve that. So what do we do? We're going to use the second equation to solve for X. What do we get? X equals, now I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm just going to go to the equation and, and I'm going to kind of draw on the equation. X naught, we know X naught is zero. So we don't need to worry about that. I'm just going to ignore that now. Equals one half times V naught. V naught is two meters per second plus V six meters per second times T 1.50 seconds. And what do we get? We multiply that out and, well, first let's think about the units. We've got meters per second plus meters per second. That's going to give us meters per second times seconds. That'll cancel out the second, uh, cancel the seconds in the numerator and denominator and leave us with meters. So we're going to end up with the units of meters. We multiply them together. Two plus six is eight divided by two is four. Four times 1.5 is six meters. And there we go. There is our answer for x. What about a? Can we use the first equation to solve for a? Yes, we could. It's got an a in it, and it's got everything else. We know everything else. Could we use the second equation? No, there's no a in it. Could we use the third equation? We could. It's got an a in it, but we would have to use our value for x. Fourth equation, Again, we could, it's got an A in it, we know everything else, but we would have to use our calculated value for X. So, let's use the first equation. And what do we get? Well, in this case, this is not actually solved for A to begin with. So, <clears throat> why don't we solve our equation uh, just with the variables for A to begin with? Now, how do we get A by itself? We'll bring the V naught over here, and then divide by T. So, what does that leave us with? A and you can do this in several steps if, if uh, you'd like to do it better that way. A equals V minus V naught over T. And what do we get? V minus V naught, that is V is six meters per second minus V naught, which is two meters per second. And then divided by, rather than putting this over T, where we'll have a denominator in the numerator and then another denominator, I'm going to multiply by 1 over t, 1.50 meters, uh, oops, sorry, 1.50 seconds. There. I think it's easier to try and keep one numerator and one denominator in your entire equation because if you have a numerator and a denominator in the numerator and then another denominator, I mean, where, what cancels? What, what can cancel each other? It can be a little confusing. So let's keep one numerator denominator, one numerator denominator, one numerator denominator. So what do we get? Well, six minus two is four. Four divided by one, 4.5 is, I just happen to have written the answers down over here, uh, 2.67 meters per, so we've got meters in the numerator, seconds in the denominator, and another factor of seconds in the denominator, so seconds squared. And those units look good. Meters for position, meters per second squared for acceleration. Good, so those work very well. Think about the answer, six meters, so she goes for six meters in 1.5 seconds as she's speeding up, that seems pretty reasonable. 2.67 meters per second squared, not a very large number, sounds like a reasonable acceleration as she's speeding up. When you're trying to figure out if something seems reasonable, you don't have to like redo the calculation to check, although you certainly could do that if you had the time. But the idea is just to think about, is the acceleration 0 0.0267? Well, that's kind of, kind of a small acceleration. I don't think you'd be able to accelerate from two to six in one and a half seconds. Is it 267 meters per second squared? Oh, that's a very, very large acceleration. I think that would be much too high. So 
just you're kind of just asking yourself does it seem like a reasonable value does it make sense all right very very good what we're going to do now is take a look at a specific kind of uniformly accelerated motion one that's going to be very very important Galileo Galilei was an Italian astronomer, physicist, mathematician, philosopher that uh, did some incredible work in the late 1500s and early 1600s. And one of the things that he uh, came up with, so to speak, is the law of falling bodies, sometimes referred to as Galileo's law of falling bodies. And it states, in a vacuum, all bodies fall with the same acceleration. Now, what does that mean? Well, first of all, fall with the same acceleration. That means that if something is falling, moving only under the influence of gravity, so not if you're moving it with your hand, but only if it is moving completely under the influence of gravity, it will fall with the same acceleration. In other words, the acceleration of the motion will be the same regardless of what the body is. All bodies fall. Why in a vacuum? Well, because there's something else that will act on objects that are falling if it's not a vacuum, and that is air, air resistance. So let's see if we can do a very, very simple demonstration for this. First, if I've got something, we, we're obviously not in a vacuum right now, and if I drop a piece of paper and a pen, you can see the pen accelerates faster than the paper does. But we could do an approximate demonstration of what might happen uh, if we could ignore air resistance. The paper experiences a lot of air resistance, but these pens won't. Now, here I've got two pens and one pen. Obviously, this is going to have twice the weight of this one. So what happens if I drop two objects, one with a half the weight of the other, one twice the weight of, of this one? Well, Galileo's Law of Falling Body says that as long as we can ignore air resistance, they should both fall at the same rate. Now, you might not see them land, but I think you should be able to hear them. When this one lands, it will sound like that. When this one lands, it sounds like that. Let's see if they land at the same time. So I'll take these, drop them together. Well, it sounds like they, they landed. Well, that just fell off the bench onto the floor again. So it sounded like they landed pretty close together at pretty much the same same time, in other words, with the same acceleration. They both accelerated at the same rate to travel the same distance in the same amount of time. All right, very good. Well, let's use this to solve, oh, I'm sorry, there's one more thing I forgot. What is this acceleration? Well, uh, uh, physicists have done many, many experiments, experiments and they have calculated, or I'm sorry, they have measured this value very, very accurately. And it actually varies depending on where you are on the Earth. The Earth has slightly different amounts of gravity depending on where you are. Where I am now, just out, outside of Atlanta, the acceleration due to gravity has a value of 9.80 meters per second squared. There are the units for acceleration. This is going to be a number that we're going to use so often that it's got its own variable name. This quantity is called lowercase g. So make sure you write it as a lowercase g because a capital G actually means something else. It has to do with gravity, but it's a different quantity. We'll see that later on. So lowercase g, 9.80 meters per second squared. Sometimes you will see, see this quoted as g is negative 9.80 meters per second squared. I am not going to do that. Whether it's a positive or negative acceleration depends on how you define your coordinate system. If you define your coordinate system pointing down, the acceleration due to gravity is always down towards the Earth. So let me just write this. This is 9.80 meters per second squared down, straight down. If we define our coordinate system as pointing down, that is in the same direction as the acceleration, and the acceleration would be positive. If you define your coordinate system as pointing up, then the acceleration, which is down, would be in the negative direction. And in that case, the acceleration would be negative. So whether your acceleration is positive or negative depends not only on the direction of the acceleration, but it depends on how you define your coordinate system, as we've seen before.
So I'm just going to leave this as g is equal to 9.80 meters per second squared, and we know the direction is downward, and then we'll determine whether we want that to be positive or negative, depending on how we define our coordinate system. Great, let's take a look at some problems involving g, this uniform acceleration. 